Hi everyone, Gina with Belly Beads Paper Jewelry here today to bring you a tutorial on a rather unique material used for our paper beads. Now, us paper beaders, we love to look for new and unique materials to make our paper beads in, but this has actually been around for a while. I try to bring it to the next level or try to uh, just modify it but this has been around for a long time and the reason why I wanted to um, create my beads with this material that I'm going to tell you in a minute is I usually use the scrap paper, scrap paper uh, in the in the big pads and there are certain colors that I just could not find and this is the color that I've been looking for for a good maybe three to four months so I thought, let me see if there are other colors like this somewhere else. So I was in the store and I found it, but it wasn't paper. And I thought, I think I could do this. So I want to share it with you. Maybe this will expand, you know, your crafting materials and uh, have fun with it. So I'm going to give you the uh, entire tutorial on what it is. Are you ready? All right. So... If you haven't seen my other tutorial on my candy charms, you have to. These are so much fun to make. And I have a group out there called um, Paper Bees Born, Born Pretty. And it's on our Facebook group. And everyone is creating them after I posted it. And they're having a they're having so much fun. So I, uh, I invite you to our group too. It's called, uh, it's on Facebook called Paper Bees Born Pretty. Uh, and today I'm going to let you know exactly how I made these. these. This is from my candy charm template. And just so you know, my, all my templates are free, um, on, on Facebook. So you can upload them. And this material also made these pretty beads. Now, again, I wanted this color because I wanted to put some gold into it. I even made my, my own tassel. I put the gold around it and I have other tassels that I had made and this is the material that I use. Now it has been around. I know everyone's been using it, but I was just so floored when that came out. Perfect. I love it. And it is tissue paper. Okay. Now this is a different kind of tissue paper versus the tissue paper that you use in, um, this is actually napkins. This isn't the tissue paper that you would use in gift wrapping. This is tissue uh, napkins. And I bought it for $2.99 in the dollar store. Well, it was everything a dollar plus up. So, and this gave me quite a bit, if you, if you can see that. And here's some other ones. Look at these, these patterns. Now, of course, you can get these in your scrapbooking paper. But what I found is the tighter the pattern, the more pattern you can see with your beads. So if the patterns are much smaller and you're making smaller beads, it'll be vibrant. Versus if, of course, if something is scattered all over the paper and you're making these small beads, you're just going to see one color. So the tighter the patterns, that's what you want to find. Look at these. These are so absolutely wonderful. I love them. Now, there are quite a number of tutorials out there that, that are using this. Now, I did see one that was um, done, but I didn't really want to use glue. Okay, so I did find one that someone was using and I thought that would be much better for me. So I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to give this all to you. So with the tools today, what you're going to need is any type, type of um, napkin tissue paper. And you're going to use, you're going to need your iron. I know my camera, I don't know if it, um, if it fits in there. Now you want to put your iron at cotton and try to make it as high as you can. It has to get really hot, but just be careful. You don't want to make it too hot. You're going to need, um, this is the, oops, excuse me, we're going to have wax paper, or this is actually parchment paper, so you want to use parchment paper, and you want to get your napkin, and freezer paper. Now, with freezer paper, what makes this rather unique is it has this glossy wax, and then on the other side, it's just clear. You want to make sure and be mindful of where the glossy part is. And you want to get something, not like a table that um, doesn't have like a hard surface. So I'm actually using just this. Um, it's, it helps me it's a little bit. It's a cardboard, a big cardboard um, board that I have here. And you want to grab 
your wax paper with glossy side up and you want to cut it to the size of your napkin which I have here now there's one thing you have to remember on the other side if you have a two ply or a three ply uh, napkin you want to take it apart so this is just um, a two ply and I'm going to try to and these are kind of tricky but I want to show you exactly instead of just speeding it all up and you know have it already done I will have some things already done so you can see but I want to show you how sometimes it's difficult now I know a lot of you know the tricks to this but there you go take it off peel it off this other layer and take it off very slowly you don't want to rip your tissue your napkin take it off very slowly now what are we going to do with this piece? I don't know. Maybe that could be for something else. <laughs> All right. Glossy side. Here is your tissue, your napkin. He keeps calling it tissue because it's, it's like tissue paper, but it's a napkin. You want to place this side, the bottom, to the gloss, just like so. There you go. Now, if you find there's wrinkles in here, you can certainly grab your parchment paper, place it over that. With just make sure whatever you have underneath here it's just it's not going to stick this is just plastic and you can iron out those wrinkles and with your um, iron you want to go just very lightly make sure it's hot enough and just in a circular motion okay just to get some of those out sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't if you press a little harder perhaps okay and just continue to do it in a certain we just want to get the wrinkles out right now and if you don't want to do that that's fine too okay it's a little bit more straighter now we want to grab the freezer paper now the freezer paper i have is reynolds uh kitchen freezer paper just regular paper you get at the grocery store place your tissue excuse me napkin with this side the underneath of it to the gloss then you're going to grab your parchment paper. Now, uh, just always use parchment. Never use anything else because it will stick. Okay. Iron it out a little bit with your hands. Press it down. Now, the most important way and the technique, and I hope the camera can get all of this, is to be very, um, put a lot of pressure on it. Okay. And it must be on the highest mark now be careful though i don't know whoops sorry the cameras i don't know your iron okay so you have to be very careful with it and you want to just iron this all the way down so what's happening is the paper underneath the wax um, i'm sorry the freezer paper is being heated up and it's going to adhere to the back of the napkin so it's going to allow it to be stiff like paper so you're creating your own paper from a napkin now, I was um, going through some issues with this. What was happening was it wasn't uh, adhering to the freezer paper. And that's because I didn't put enough pressure. And I, my iron wasn't as hot. Now, be careful. I have mine on cotton, like I mentioned. And the most important thing, I, from what I've learned, is the, oh, sorry, <laughs> the pressure. It's the pressure that is needed. And in a circular motion and do not stay in one spot like that long because it will burn the paper now this does take somewhat some time it took me about inside maybe 15 minutes to get this all done but you're going to notice that this is the coolest thing now a lot of the other tutorials they had where they were gluing they place glue um, on paper and then place the tissue or the napkin on top of that. But I found that that was too cumbersome for me. It was too sticky. The glue was getting all over. And when I went to cut it, it didn't work. But I'm sure whoever does use these with the, with whoever uses the glue, I'm sure they're, they're very successful at it. I just didn't have the patience for it. All right. So I'm still going along with this. And in certain spots, I'm sticking a little bit longer. You want to concentrate on the, the middle of the paper because that's where it's going to create the bubbles because if you just go ahead and do the edges and you're going to be like okay it's done but it isn't so start in the middle and work your way out and that'll also flatten it 
a little bit better. So you want to start in the middle because when you start cutting it, there may uh, not be an attachment and that's going to lift up. And it's so ironic um, the way this has, when I saw this, uh, someone else doing it, it was really neat. Um, back in the day when I owned a t-shirt company, it was really cool because, well, this is back in the 80s. I um, had a t-shirt with decals and the transfers that we would put on the t-shirts. When you use your iron over this, you're going to have a little odor. It's a plastic odor, but it smells just like the transfers I use. So we used to have these big machines that would, you would just press down on the transfer itself and the decal would appear on the t-shirt. I don't know if any of you remember that, but that was back in the 80s. I'm really dating myself here. So again, there is a little patience that you have to have with that, which of course I don't have too much. <laughs> So we just want to press it. I'm pressing down. I'm actually standing up now. And I do apologize if the camera is shaking because I am standing up. Remember, the middle part is very important. Once you feel confident that it's down, you're going to go towards the edges of the paper. I'm going to go over to this side. And then I'm doing the edges right now. It might be out of camera focus. Okay. And then I'm going to stop for a moment. I'm going to show you a little trick. You're going to know if it's all stuck down. So I'm going to... Take the wax, I'm sorry, the parchment paper out of the way. Lift it up. Now there are some spots I see that are not done already. And you're going to see it too. I'm going to bring it to your attention. Look, see? I didn't concentrate on that so much, but I did concentrate on the middle. So I'm going to reapply the parchment paper. And I'm just going to go over the edges and I'll show you. But I wanted to um, just bring to the attention. I am really sorry that the camera is shaking so much. I just want to bring to your attention the middle part because it always looks like you're finished if the edges are done and you're like, okay, this is done. And then you go to cut it and the middle isn't done. So you just want to um, maybe a few seconds or a little longer on the edges, but be mindful it's hot. So be very careful, please. I don't want to get anybody texting me or putting comments that they burnt themselves. So be mindful. It's just like if you're ironing anything else. All right, I'm going to turn it around so I know this edge wasn't completed. Remember, be mindful also of what you're um, ironing on, that nothing else gets sticky. It's not funny, but I was in a rush to do this one night. And I did it um, on another piece of board. Maybe I should show you. It's not funny, but... It melted it, so it was there was plastic underneath of it, and I'm like, oops, I melted it. So I thought, okay, Gina, you gotta get something that's not gonna melt. I was just, you know, when you're in a rush, you just want to see the end result. All right, I think this is good. All right, and I want to show you this. I'm releasing the parchment. It's really hot, so you just want to leave it go for a little bit. It looks like all the edges are done. I don't see anything lift up. I don't see anything lift up. Oh, there's a little piece there. There's a little piece there. So for time purposes, I'm just going to leave that because I want to show you another trick. Turn it over. Okay, so now you have the back. You can see if you've if there's any bubbles, you'll notice. I have a few over here, and I wonder. Now yeah, you can do this. You can place the parchment paper back over the back side of it, and then just reapply the heat to the side to the you know to the um the parts that look like they have bubbles in it and that'll help you also see there's not too many bubbles now everything seems really flat now for the best part if you have a rolling pin and i did have one but i don't have it here um i would roll it out here and it's really hot so you got to be careful you can roll it and that'll um, just secure it a little bit more longer. Now I would, uh, now this is really hot, so I would put it aside, okay? Now the best part is if you have a, um, an automatic cutter, like myself, I have the Cricut machine, and, or you can use, um, I used to use the Fiskars cutting machine, um, which is just the, uh, 
Um, I think I have one. I'm sorry. Let me see. Oh, no, I don't have it with me. But any kind of cutting you can do with this. It's really fun. But what's even more fun is because I have the Cricut, I'm going to show you. It actually can apply to your mat. Let me take this away so you can probably see it a little bit better. Look at this. Now, this is my for my Cricut. And only really paper was to go on this, but I thought, let me check it out. Because if I can get these in paper beads, this is going to be awesome. Okay, so now here's my little scooper for my Cricut. And I'm going to start peeling off very slightly. Be mindful. This is a very thin piece of material. And this is, um, it's tissue. It's not paper. But look on the back side. The freezer paper actually made it a regular piece of paper. So, but again, be careful because it is still tissue on the front. Now, it feels okay. It doesn't feel like it's going to come up. But I want to show you how cool this is. Maybe I, sh I could um, put that apart there. This is when I found out I was able to put this through the Cricut machine. I was so darn excited. You can put anything through the Cricut machine. It depends on the needle that you use. And if you have a Cricut and you're new to it, I just created a tutorial on the basics, just 101, just to show you um, how to navigate through your Cricut machine. So I'm just going to go ahead. Be very careful, though, when you're pulling this up. Look, it's it's pretty clean cut. I'm just going to yank it off right now so I can show you. I'm too excited to show you um, everything. So I'm just going to take this all off. Here we go. And I'm going to show you, look. Oops, wait a minute. Hold on one second. I apologize. Okay, here are some rollers I have. I was so darn excited I didn't get my rollers out. Here is one of, okay, look at this. Ooh, it's just like paper, but it's tissue. Can, can you, I, I just, from this to this, I think that's awesome. Now let's see, I'm going to try one of my rollers. I'm going to just stick it right in there. And roll that paper up. And it feels okay. It's not tugging. It's not ripping. I'm going to get into the camera a little bit better. I'm a little off here. I <laughs> can't see. But look at this. And of course, I'm unprepared. I don't even have my glue. Look, I'm so excited. There goes the one bead. Now, I did a couple beads. Let me, um, let me grab my glue. I want to show you another... Let's see, let's try a barrel. This page I used, these are all my samples. So they're all different kinds of shapes and sizes. And what's nice about this is if you have like a special occasion or you're doing a wedding, oops, I'm sorry, I was out of the camera there. You're doing a wedding, you can get all white wedding, pick, uh, wedding, um, what do you call it, wedding napkins with silver bells on it or something. And you can create this really pretty pieces of jewelry if you know someone's getting married. And there we go. And look at this. Now I usually, since this is gold, I have gold on here. You could see it on here. I would dip the ends. Let's see if I can get some gold here. I usually just get a stamper. And getting a little messy here but it's okay I'm really excited as you can see and look at this now this is coming up a little bit so you're just gonna reapply some glue like always and look at that is that the coolest thing and that's from this now this is my barrel and let's see what else I have um, oh there's some this is really cool this is um, called dashes I made some uh they're called dots and dashes if you haven't seen that tutorial that's on morse code um bracelets back in the day they used to um, have morse code if you're familiar with that and i made bracelets out of morse code and this these they were called dots and dashes 
and this is, or it could be a barrel too. And I would have little tinier ones. Let me see where my tinier, here you go. Here's my dots, they were called. And you can create a message on your bracelet. You can create a message on your bracelet and in dots and dashes, and you can download um, the encrypted wording on Google. I have a whole tutorial out there. If you're really interested, go on to the Belly Beads um, Morse code bracelets. They're really cool. We made some of those and they were really popular. And there you go. So these were my dots and dashes. And again, I can certainly use my gold stamping and just press that in there to highlight the gold that's within the, um, the paper itself. Let's see, we have these two. Mm. And I also have, and of course, I have for these, this is the paper here for that. Look how pretty that is. And I'm not sure if you saw my tutorial on my candy charms, but these were really awesome. These were um, very popular. And I'll show you how I did that. I really feel like I'm off the camera. I'm sorry. <laughs> And we go ahead and roll some, put some glue in there. Okay, I'm going to put this to the side real quick. And here is my other one. This has to be rolled actually first. And these are a one millimeter um, rolling pin, paper roller. Okay. Take that off. And here is my other, I'm gonna put that to the side. And here is the, I'll just redo this. Go back in and there we go. Put some paper glue on there. Place this inside here. More glue. Fold it over. And fold it over. Now you want to make sure it's tugged. If you can see in there, you don't want to keep turning it because then you're going to um, create too much of a wind around the bead. So you want to lightly just fold it over, fold it over. And then you put some more on, roll it over like this. And there goes your candy charm bead. And you can do the ends. I love to finish off my ends with a color. It just feels like it's more completed. And it doesn't affect when you glaze them. Let's see if I can pull this one apart. These are still off the hot off the press. So that is my candy charm. And let me see. I think I have some larger beads that I like to show you. These are some really this is a really large one. And I'm gonna use a really small one millimeter. Let's see how this one comes out. I think this is the basic cone. There we go. These were really fun to make too. Oh, these were called my big barrel shapes. <laughs> and there you go. And that's the one here. And like I mentioned, you can go ahead and place it in your, um, your stamp, and I have a lot of colors. And here are all the other colors of stamps that you can use with them. It's really fun. And just remember that once you're done, make a pretty bracelet or necklace or any kind of piece of jewelry with this. You can have a lot of fun with all the different um, the patterns. I have a whole lot more ideas that I'm gonna be creating. I've just been having a whole a lot of fun. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up subscribe and click on the bell so it, it alerts you um, for my next video that comes up. And if you have any comments, please um, comment below. It, it's been so fun and everyone's been so great and supportive. I love to help people who are new to this or even, you know, experts too. We like to exchange ideas and new materials. So please comment below, subscribe, share, and uh, hope to see you in my group there, Paper Bead Born Pretty at Facebook. And I will be actually going live tomorrow, Friday, if you'd like to join us. 
Okay. Have a great one. Have fun. And thank you. I will put all the descriptions of everything that I used here down below. Have a good one. Bye.